Well, good evening, everyone. I will. Uh, I'm, I'm glad everyone is here. Glad that uh, the last uh, two and a half weeks are over with, with all the cold weather and everything. It was. I hope everyone got out of that safely with their homes and everything. So, um, before we get started uh, with this uh, March Planning Commission meeting, I'm going to stand and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, and Mr. Covert's going to lead us in the invocation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to come hear issues on behalf of the city tonight, Lord. We ask that you give us wisdom in making these decisions. We ask that you be with the president and his staff, the governor and his staff, and the mayor and his staff, Lord, of Springdale, and give us the direction we need to go forward with this city to lift you up. We ask these things in Jesus' name tonight. Amen. Roy was going to add to his invocation, but uh, I'll, I'll work to get you guys out of here as quick as possible. I think there's a uh, racetrack game this evening that people want to go see. Lord, let the hogs win. <laughs> so we'll go as quick as possible on there. But thank you guys for coming to our March 2nd, 2021 Planning Commission meeting. I'll call this meeting to order. If we can do roll call. Howard Austin. Here. Gary Compton. Here. Roy Covert. Here. James David. Shannon Mueller. Here. Peyton Parker. Here. Uh, Kevin Parsley. Here. Ben Peters. Here. Dale Tyler. Here. And do we have any questions for the February minutes? Okay. If not, uh, if we have a motion to approve. Motion to approve. I have a motion by Mr. Covert. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Dr. Compton. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Um, the first item, I'm, I'm actually pulling something forward on here because it's actually going to be coming off the agenda. But uh, Jim Reed, uh, we've got uh, All American Steakhouse. Uh, they had asked for a variance, but I think they have an ability to work through that. So. Thank you. How y'all doing tonight? Jim Reed, 9460 Oak Drive. I'm here representing Mark Basic, Mark and Laura Basic, the All-American Steakhouse. We have asked for this variance, but we have decided we don't need it. We've got a way to work around it. Mark would like to ask y'all or talk to y'all about the new steakhouse. Great, thank you. And thank you for, mo for moving us up on, on the agenda. Uh, and, and I wanted to come tonight and just be here uh, to answer any questions, we are converting. You can talk into that mic. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. We, uh, we are converting the Western Sizzling at 3492 West Sun Sunset into the All American Steakhouse and Sport Theater. Um, we're working through it. We're still working through the financing, uh, working with our bank. You know, there's a COVID thing that's going on, and, and it's just not as easy as it used to be. Uh, but we are, we've got a trained management team that's ready. We've got plans. We've got the permit. We're still working to do it. Uh, we're going to be very proud to be in Springdale, excited to be in Springdale. And if anybody has any questions, I'll be glad to meet them later, answer them, and just whatever. But thanks for the opportunity. Great. We appreciate it. Glad you guys were able to work through the variants on there as well. Thanks. So. Yes. Thank you. Appreciate All right. It. You bet. Thank you. Th thanks, Jim. Uh, first section that we have on here is public hearing. We have proposed amendment to the amend Springdale Code of Ordinance, Chapter 130, Zoning Ordinance, to add Article 4, Section 5.5, Seed, Springdale Elective Enhancement District. Okay, as y'all will remember, we've worked for the last several months on this optional extension of our form based code to two areas, one to the north and one to the south of <coughs> the downtown form based code. Uh, it will work as if the property owners want to engage this. They will come before with a request and ask for it to be changed using those regulatory plans as the guidelines for what district it will go into. And then all their development will have to meet the form based code. But I want to stress that it is optional. It gives us a chance to expand and I think it gives us some opportunities to bring some uh, development in those areas that's not and I know it's not available in the current zoning and I think We've had a good response. We've had a good response from some of the property owners and the stakeholders in, in the area, and we're ready to move this forward to council. 
Uh, if it is recommended for approval tonight, it will go to council next Tuesday evening. And I can answer any other questions if anybody has any. Yes, and this is a public hearing, so uh, any questions or comments from the audience? Anyone online? Okay. To the commission? This will be a recommendation. Re recommendation to move forward. I have a recommendation by Mr. Covert. I have a second. Second. Second by Dr. Compton. Austin? Yes. Compton? Yes. Covert? Yes. David? Mueller? Yes. Parker? Yes. Parsley? Yes. Peters? Yes. Uh, Tyler? Yes. The amendment passes 8 0. And it will be on the council agenda for next Tuesday evening. Second public hearing is proposed amendment to this. Springdale Code of Ordinance, Chapter 32, Downtown District Form Based Code to amend Section 1.2 to add property to the Form Based Codes District uh, and to amend Section 2.1 regulating plan to revise the boundary of the campus type 1. Uh, Austin, can you highlight with your, uh, with your mouse the piece of yeah, property sure. we're really talking about? This piece of property was not originally included in the uh, Form Based Code, and the property owner now is recommending has requested that it be added as a campus type one and then the property that fronts out onto uh, Emma Street is property that's owned by the city and we want to put that all in the same so we're just adding to the boundary and setting them up as campus type one okay any questions or comments from the audience and again if this is a recommendation to go to council next Tuesday evening for the Amendment to the ordinance. To the commission. Recommendation to approve. Recommendation by Mrs. Mueller. Second. Second. Second by Mr. Covert. Compton. Yes. Covert. Yes. Mueller. Yes. Parker. Yes. Parsley. Yes. Peters. Yes. Tyler. Yes. Austin. Yes. Amendment passes 8 0. Uh, we have our uh, one tabled item, R21-04, Brian and Melanie Moore Trust, Cadence Crossing, 7655 West Gibbs Road. Um, this is a rezoning of A1 to a PUD. And there's uh, also preliminary plats and a variance. So preliminary plat 21-01, west side of Gibbs Road, between Harbor Avenue and Nich Nichols Road. And the variance, variance is for the deviation of the PUD size from 10 acres to 5 acres presented by ESI. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Jason Apple with ESI. Uh, we are requesting um, this five acre piece of property to be rezoned uh, from A1 to PUD. Uh, this is just north of uh, Harbor on Gibbs Road. Um, we're proposing 26 single family units on this, pro on this property. Um, we are requesting a variance uh, for the PUD size. Um, the standard PUD size per code is 10 acres or more and we're requesting this five acre track be allowed to be zoned as a herd as a PUD so uh, I'll answer any further further questions staff comments we've had some discussions over the years about that 10 acre minimum for a PUD uh, is there anything magical about that size I think that's a nice size to deal with especially if you're doing a combination of commercial and, and residential this is a case where they're doing just residential and we may want to look and, and I can tell you the staff is working on the idea of doing a planned residential district where we could have a different minimum size uh, you know we don't want to go down too small because then you have a whole bunch of puds to take care of but it needs to be a size that's reasonable for development so I don't think we have any concern about the variance to allow it to be reduced from 10 acres to 5 acres and that's the first thing that has to happen because if we can't go down to five acres then we've got to back up and start again so that that's the first action that needs to be taken if the uh, planning commission will grant that variance to reduce it from 10 acres to five any questions or comments from the audience yeah okay. if you can come up to the mic please 
And ma'am, if you can state your name and address, please. Thank you. I'm Rita Valines, and I live on Gibbs Road in Springdale. Okay. And we were just wondering how many homes will be built in 26. And is the road going to be widened? Is there going to be uh, sidewalks and sewer system? We're going to get on to all those details in just a few minutes. Oh, okay, thank if you. If we can reduce it down to five acres, then we're going to go into all that kind of detail so you know what we're talking about. Okay, thank okay. you very much. Any other questions or comments? This is a call for the vote. I do have one quick question. Yes. Um, so if we if we agree to let this go to five acres, does that then make all PUD requests can be five acres or do we have to do something different or just do them one at a time like this? Right now there would have to be a variance every time until we do a, a, either a change in the PUD ordinance itself okay. or create a planned residential. This is just this one time for a variance for this one. But I think- Doesn't set a precedent no. for everything? Okay. No, not necessarily. <clears throat> What was the what was the reason for doing a PUD um, instead of just a medium density rezoning another one? Well, it's a lot size for one thing. Yeah, obviously a lot size. Uh, we're, we're just trying to create a different product um, in this area. Uh, you know, these are these are smaller lots. Um, they'll be they'll have they'll have rear entry garages. Um, you know, a lot of the, the residential around this area is just standard single family, 70, 80 foot wide lots. Um, so just trying to create a little neighborhood that's a little bit different than what's out there right now. And it's the size of track you had to work with, right? Oh, yeah, sure. Okay. That, that's kind of a deciding factor because you got a five acre track to work with too. Okay. I'm glad you just cut through the chase off now. <laughs> Get down to I mean, it. That's we're, the we're also about. we're also encumbered on the south end by a large power line uh, that runs through there, a large easement. So we're just trying to uh, work around those parameters. Any other questions or comments from the commission? Be a call for the vote for the variance. Call for the vote or for the yeah. Call for the vote for the variance. We, we do that one before the rezoning, right? Right. Okay. Covert? Yes. Mueller? Yes. Parker? Yes. Parsley? Yes. Peters? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Austin? Yes. Compton? Yes. Variance passes 8-0. Okay. Now we can get into the details of the rezoning request to the, plan, to the PUD. The adopted comprehensive land use plan indicates medium density residential for the area. The rezoning request is in keeping with the following goals and policies of the comprehensive land use plan is recommended for approval. Protect the positive aspect of neighborhood character throughout the city. Appropriate locations for single family and multifamily residential development should be provided based on accessibility, site suitability, utility availability, neighborhood compatibility, and environmental factors. Assure adequate land allocation for residential purposes by providing lots of adequate size and encourages the development of a variety of housing types appropriate to the size and income of all households living and working in Springdale. With this PUD, comes a, it comes along with a development plan and a site plan and a set of covenants. And this is a contract between the city and the developer if it's approved. This is how this property is going to be developed. If it is sold, so if this PUD is approved, then and it's sold that transfers with it so we know what we're getting we know what it's going to look like how it's going to be laid out and it can only be changed if they come back through this process to make amendments to it and if you'll remember we've had some couple of well one pub that's been back a couple of times for revision so we know that process works when they want to make changes so i'm going to go through the details of the pud document so we're all aware of what what this pud is going to contain as we said it is a five acre track it's four point 4.95 acres. The project is pre be proposed to be constructed as a single phase. The developer wants to begin construction as quickly as practical once construction plans are approved and they anticipate completing infrastructure construction in 18 months. The development strategy for this project is for 26 <coughs> single family residential lots. Uh, the entire subdivision will be residential with no commercial uses proposed or allowed. The in developer intends to buy, sell, or lease homes on all lots. However, the developer reserves the right to sell lots as market conditions warrant. All homes will either face, will face either the central primary street or toward Gibbs Road 
and all will include rear loaded garages with driveway access from the alleyways which run along the rear of the lots. <clears throat> Typical lot size will be 35 feet wide by 100 to 110 feet in length. The only permitted uses in this PUD will be city public uses by right, cultural, recreational, and health facilities, single family dwellings, zero lot lines, and a model home or temporary marketing office as the project is being developed. Uh, the project consists of 26 single family lots on five acres, which is 5.2 units per acre, which is just barely above what we consider to be low income, I mean low density, which is four units per acre. They are proposing a one acre provided for green space, which, is, which meets the requirement of the 20% minimum required by the code. Um, most of this is located in the uh, easement that's on the south side of the property, which is an overhead power easement. As I said, the, the lots will be typically 35 feet wide by 100 to 110 feet deep. They will have front setbacks of 10 feet and side setbacks of either zero or 10. Is that the way it's set up? Because my, okay. Yes. A zero lot light on one side and a 10 foot side setback on the other side. And it will have a 15 foot rear lot, uh, real setback. It's to provide a style of housing not widely in the area. Uh, zero lot lines with rear loading garages accessing rear alleyways in a similar configuration to those that are in Harbor Meadow houses. Um, the spacing of houses, reduced front lots, yards, and absence of driveways along the primary street will create a living and inv inviting space with a strong sense of community. The proposed setbacks will allow the single family homes to build on the lot as shown on the, on the preliminary plat with small side and front yards to emulate the look and feel of the Harbor Meadows homes discussed above. You look at the uh, preliminary plat that's on the wall. The first lot on each one of those rows, the house will be built on that 10 foot setback off of the street. And then it will have a 10 foot, it, it will be on that 10 foot setback and then all the rest of them will be on zero lot lines the rest of the way down with a 10 foot on the west side of each of the structures along the primary street and then on the streets that front onto uh, Gibbs Road, well, they start with the same way, starting with the, the building line will be at the edge of the street and it'll go that direction, okay? I think that's important to, to picture. Um, the front building setback is proposed to be 10 feet, which is significantly less than the typical Springdale residential setback of, setback of 20 feet. Since the homes all feature rear loaded garages, one of the primary reasons for needing a large front setback is removed in this development. The proposed setbacks will still allow for a substantial front yard and landscaping for these units and provide space for water and sewer infrastructure. Now it's proposed that there will be parking on the street, the interior street, not Gibbs Road, and it, and it will be both sides of the street, correct? The street width that you proposed is the street width that would allow parking on both sides. Correct. Yes. Okay. There's a conflict in the in the covenant, so we need to get that corrected. Uh, rear setbacks are proposed to be 15 feet, which is identical to the rear setback for lots in Harbor Meadows. Each home is required to have a rear loaded garage with a cap capacity for at least two vehicles. Um, Front loading garages or direct access to West Gibbs Roads or the Central Streets are prohibited. The covenants will provide requirements regarding any accessory structures to be placed on the lot. Um, the exterior building material, all of which will be required to be high quality materials. Primary building materials will include brick, stone, manufactured stone, wood, and concrete siding such as Hardy brand. There will be no vinyl siding except in the soffits in the, um, and you didn't put that in here, are you using any vinyl siding on the soffits? On the soffits, yes, I assume. Okay, yes. you probably need to add that to the document itself too. Uh, the developer with the uh, use unit 34 may operate a temporary sales office and up to two model homes at a time in the development. When will those uh, model, mobile offices or temp, mobile homes or mobile 
model homes or temporary sales office, when will those go away? At what time in the development of the project will they, they no longer be there? We need to discuss a time limit. Do you want a time limit or a percentage build out? Either Can one. Two years. two years. Okay. So after two years from the start of construction, and that means start of utility work, they'll be gone after that. Okay. Uh, so they'll, 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 they'll be, be in place ahead. within two years. And then did I hear you say as far as an end date? I'm looking at the end date, not when it starts. So from start of construction on the utilities and the street work, and when all of the, from two years from that point, all the model homes have to be gone by then. Let's just do it from final plat. It would be easier. Okay. It's from, from a date stamp from the approval of final plat to okay. for two years. Rather than approval of the construction plans. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so you want all of the infrastructure in where you have the ability to pull a permit and from the date that the final plan is approved, you have two years from that. Yes. Date. Okay. And we're all clear on that. Um, and that you guys are, we'll have to make these amendments before we get to council. So we have all those in there. Okay. Covenants shall include various provisions to ensure the pleasing appearance of the neighborhood is maintained and which are typical of many developments. This will include uh, requirements related to fences, yard maintenance, and storage of trash cans out of sight from the road. 20% uh, of the property will be reserved to a large POA lot with parking, a tight lot with play structures, and a pavilion with uh, picnic benches and barbecue grills. And access in between lot mid block will allow pedestrians to access the POA. And that access needs to be paved. I don't think it shows on the plat itself or in the document, but that needs to be paved. Uh, the home builder will be responsible for installation of one tree per lot during house construction. Installation of the tree is a requirement prior to issuance, issuance of the certificate of occupancy. Developer will install trees and landscaping in common areas as shown on the landscape plans. Builder and developer shall provide a standard wearing your warranty for each tree they install. All trees installed by developer and our home builder shall be one of the following species, and they list five different species. A question was raised is what happens if that uh, tree dies in the front yard? Will the covenants require that it be replaced? Okay, so we need to add that to the covenants that it's the homeowner's responsibility to maintain that one tree on each of the lots, okay? Uh, there are three types of street. The east section of street A, uh, between Gibbs Road and the first intersection with the alleyway has no lots fronting on it and includes a median with curb and gutter through the middle of the street. This portion of the street will have a 60 foot wide right of way and measure 50 feet from back of curb to back of curb. Sidewalk will be installed along both sides of the street. Um, is that median to be landscaped? Okay, we need to add that into the, I'm not sure it's on your landscape plan either that that median will be landscaped. So we need to add landscaping to the median on that, on that drawing as well. The west section of street A is the portion between the two intersections with alleyways, has lots fronting the street and does not include a median. The portion of the street will have a 51 foot wide right of way and measure 29 feet from back of curb to back of curb. Sidewalk will be installed along both sides of the street and parking will be allowed on both sides of the street. Okay. Uh, the alley A and alley B will be 15 feet wide and have a 20 foot wide right of way. No curb and gutter or sidewalks are proposed for the alleys. Cut up parking restrictions, if any, will there be in the alleyways? No parking on the alleys. Okay. No parking in the alleys. Uh, the project will also include improving the west side of West Gibbs Road, Gibbs Road to Master Street Plan requirements. This will include dedicating the right of way, widening the street, adding curb and gutter, and installing the sidewalk and install drainage improvements when necessary. And again, I want to note that there will be no access to Gibbs Road from any of these lots. Okay. The project will include a single 
street connection to West Gibb Road. There will be a single monument sign at the intersection of the street A with Gibbs Road. The exterior of the sign will be constructed with primarily stone, brick, and or metal, and developer will install landscaping along the sign in accordance with the landscape plan. Is that going to be on common property? And if so, it needs to be shown on that, or it will be on one of the lots. Is the sign going to be on common property? Yes. yes. Okay. That needs to be noted on the preliminary plat. Okay. We, we talked about con when construction was going to stop. I mean, start. Okay. In the covenants, it says that fences can only be of wood or wrought iron and that no other fences will be allowed. Now, when you mean by fences, this is includes the fence at the front of each one of the lots and between each of the, uh, in the back side of the lots. Okay. So they have to be wood or wrought iron and they can be a height of six feet to minimum uniformity. So on the zero lot line side of the house, will the fence pick up at the back corner of the house and go to the property line? I mean, to the, to the end of the property line, it will be on the property line itself. Yes. Okay. Will there be double fences allowed? Back to back, like back to back fences? No. No. Okay. That needs to be noted. No double fences. And y'all think I'm really picky, but this is how we get everything taken care of and we all have it in one document. Uh, no noxious or offensive activities or nuisance shall be permitted on any lot or parcel. No person shall erect or maintain upon any lot or improvement any sign or advertising except a real estate when the property is listed for sale, provided, however, that the restric restrictions shall not apply to developer during development and construction of the subdivision. And I just thought about that today. Uh, campaign signs still, can still go on there, even though you say only real estate signs, because I don't think we can keep those off. So <laughs> you, you might want to see something about that. Uh, no animals shall be kept or maintained on any lot except the usual household pets, which shall be kept reasonably confined so as not to become a nuisance, and all owners shall comply with applicable laws, ordinances, and regulations concerning animals. Uh, everyone has to have mandatory trash pickup, uh, and I'm assuming the trash receptacles will all be in the alleyways, or will they be on the street? In the alleys. Okay. So that's something you have to work out with waste management, okay? Oh, there will only be in the alleyways. There will be no access to any You're lot on the perimeter. Hold on. Except, with the except from designated streets or roads within the subdivision, there will be no drilling, refining, quarrying, or mining applications. Uh, no communication mask, cover, or structure may be installed on a lot except that satellite dishes may be installed only on the rear roof of a dwelling and shall not exceed the height of the lowest roof ridge line of each dwelling. Park in this section needs to, to be changed. This is 3.9 because it says parking on the street is allowed but only on one side of the street. You need to change that. Um, re recreational ve vehicles and boats uh, may not be stored or parked on the lots. The minimum square footage for the dwellings is 800 square feet of heated area on the first floor and 1,300 square feet overall. For all floors, the minimum square footage requirement is exclusive of garages, porches, patios, and decks. Um, irrespective of the provisions regarding amendments of these, of these covenants, the minimum square footage requirements cannot be amended except with the express approval of the developer and the city because this, that would be something that would have to come back and be amended with the PUD document itself, so that needs to be changed. Absolutely. Before you go any further on the parking on the street section, um, what about um, the mini storage, portable mini storage tri type um, units? Uh, containers that you can have brought in? Yeah, like a go mini or something like that. That if they were moving in or something and they wanted to drop a tray, um, I, I assume they just use the, the driveway in the back. So yeah. you just go around the alley and they could drop it in the driveway. Okay, that's okay though. Okay. We that we wouldn't want that on the street itself. It needs to be on each of the individual lots. Yeah. 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 Okay. 
Yeah, because it says either on streets, because I'm saying no semi trucks or commercial yeah. vehicles allowed. I just didn't know if that is considered part of one of those on there. Sorry to be petty about that, but I mean, we just need to understand those things. Yeah, okay, we need to, we need to address that one and change the language for that. Um, only detached single family dwellings with a garage, as we said a hundred times. They will have established an architectural review committee that will have to approve in writing any of the structures to be built on any of the lots. Uh, and there is in here the way that architectural review committee is going to be established. All exterior walls of the dwellings uh, erected on the lot shall be fi finished with high quality material. Primary building materials will include brick, stone, manufactured stone, wood, and concrete siding such as hardy board, soffits, and fascias may be covered with steel, aluminum, or concrete composition material. So you don't say final on that, okay? That's, that's what you mean? All roof pitches shall be a minimum of 612. No metal roof shall be permitted. Roof shall be covered with shingles using architectural composition or better. Okay. Uh, all lots will be maintained, mowed, and kept free of noxious weeds, whether they be improved or unimproved. Uh, there is a provision in here if the owner allows grass to grow more, such that it is more than four inches high, the developer or the uh, property owners association has a right but not the obligation to have it mowed without giving notice to the owner and shall charge $75 or the amount it costs developer or association to have it mowed, whichever is greater. Um, all lots are subject to easements that are shown on the plat. The covenants will run with the land. This has a provision where it can, uh, for a period of 30 years, that provision has to stay, it has to come back to the city if it's changed in, in even after 30 years. Uh, no person is required to register as a sex offender under the, pursuant to the Sex Offender Re Registration Act of 1997 and Arkansas Code annotated 12-12-901 as amended from time to time or any other similar federal, state, or local law regulation ordinance may rent reside in, own, or occupy any lot or dwelling in the subdivision either permanently or temporarily, establishes a homeowner's association and how that goes into place. I can tell you all about that, but that's just an internal detail. It has an annual assessment for each lot of $50 that goes into the uh, property owners association for maintenance of common areas and that kind of stuff. It all allows for a special assessment for capital improvements and the method by which that can be, that assessment can be made, how those uh, assessments are to be collected and a process for late payment of assessments. It gives the duties of the board of directors, uh, the effect of non-payment of assessments and liens that are placed by the association on the property. Uh, the lien on the assessments provided for herein shall be subordinate to the lien of any first mortgage or first deed or trust now or hereever placed upon the lots. It provides ways where the membership rights can be suspended and the way that uh, cancellation of hearings can be, can be heard. The detention pond, if it remains on this site, will be maintained by the at, on the common property and the assessments that are give, made to the property owners would maintain that detention pond. Um, it provides what are the property rights of the common properties for the members of the association to use and any violations outlined if there are problems with that. And I think that's all the details. Okay, I know, do I gotta go back? <laughs> Somebody's got to me, can I go through that again? I can if we need to. So does anybody have any questions about how this is put together? Yeah, any questions or comments from the audience? Let's do the commission. Let's be a call for the vote for the rezoning. Call for the vote. Call for the vote. I have, I have one concern that I'd, I'd like to ask. In, is there a pedestrian access from the north half houses down to the common area? Yes. There is that access easement that's shown, and it's 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 between uh, lots uh, thir 12 and 13. There's a, a 10 foot access easement that'll be the pedestrian access, and it will have a sidewalk connection through there. Okay, that that's great. Then 
did I understand, maybe I misunderstood how the zero lot lines were gonna work. So they're gonna start in the center and work out from there because you couldn't have a zero on, each, on that lot line, right? Actually, they're gonna start being on the first lot on each side of the street. The zero lot line will be on that 10 foot easement and the second one would be on, you know, to the, to the property line to the west of that going that direction. So when you get to that center uh, access easement on that one, you would have that ten, five foot access easement plus the 10 foot uh, side setback for that one. And then the structure on the other side would be set five foot off of the property line. They had to explain okay. that to me because it, it didn't look like normally what I thought it was gonna be. Now, the only concern I have about that access easement going through there, there are not going to be any air conditioning units or anything in that where we have a problem with that. Okay, because we had that once before. We had uh, some air conditioning units that caused a problem. So we've, we've addressed that already too. Yes. Okay. And it will be paved. Yes, okay. five foot sidewalk. Okay, that's, that answers my question. Thank you. Any other questions from the commission? We have a call for the vote by Mr. Covert. David? Yes. Killer? Yes. Parker? Yes. Parsley? Yes. Peters? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Austin? Yes. Compton? Yes. Covert? Yes. Rezoning passes 9-0. Uh, staff will prepare the ordinance that goes to the council on the 23rd. Okay. Have a preliminary plat. Uh, staff comments on it um, is the only proposed landscaping, the one tree planting, we've discussed that. Um, will there be landscaping included on the POA lot to enhance the, the shown green space? Because I don't think you show any landscaping on the POA lot. Is there some on there? There, there is not currently. Um, we can add some, some lower shrubs type okay. landscaping in that area. Um, maybe some small trees. Okay. And we already addressed the issue that the access easement will be paved. Uh, the final proof of the preliminary plat will be subject to resolution of all drainage items as it relates to Benedetto subdivision, because it's my understanding you're trying to tie the two together and the detention pond will go away. Yes. Okay. So that it will just be open area. It won't be a detention pond. And we need that finalized PUD document with the changes that we discussed to go in there. Um, Katie, are you on? Yes. Okay. Do you have any concerns or any engineering questions with this one? Uh, well, I was going to say show a drainage easement around the pond. Um, I did not know they were trying to take the pond away after that. Um, and then I think you mentioned it already about the street um, with the on, on street parking. I don't think the street, typical street section matches what is shown. It just shows one parking lane on one side. And they're gonna have to revise that. With that mm -hmm. width, it would, it would be parking on both sides. Okay. Anything else? That's all I've got. Anything else, Patsy? No, in the, the preliminary plat is motion subject to staff comments. Any questions or comments from the audience? It's to the commission. Yeah. You had questions. Did we answer all your questions? Okay. Good. Motion subject to staff comments. Motion by Mr. Covert. Second. Second by Dr. Compton. Mueller? Yes. Parker? Yes. Arsley? Yes. Peters? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Austin? Yes. Compton? Yes. Covert? Yes. David? Yes. Preliminary plat passes 9 0. Thank you. Thank you. And I didn't uh, say this before we uh, started, but we've got a couple of tabled items. Uh, R21-10, Chad Reed, tabled. That's 560 West County Line Roads. Uh, R21-13, CCO Investments. That's tabled. That's 2207 East Highway 264. B21-06, that's tabled. Dandy Oil Company, 701 North Thompson Streets. 
uh, Mark and, and City of Black, our, um, that's a replat 21-05. Twin and City Produce, that's tabled, that's large scale 21-10 on 2014 Turnbow Avenue. Uh, and then expansion of non-conforming use on 1009 West Huntsville, that is also tabled on it. So those are ones that we will not hear this evening. Um, Next section is rezoning. We have R21-11, Luke Hammond, 3444 Wagon Wheel Road from A1 to C5, presented by Luke Hammond. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So what are we wanting to do here? Uh, so we've got a recreational gymnasium. Uh, I've got a business that I've been running in, the, in Northwest Arkansas for about four years. Uh, we've got kids from age 5 to 18 who have been training basketball side. Um, it's, I've been coaching my whole life, but uh, the, the gym would be mainly serviced for basketball. And that would serve, right now we have uh, over 100 kids in our program, and uh, it would help us service more kids in the area. Staff comments? Uh, this is a two and a half acre track. The uh, land use plan indicates commercial use for the area. The rezoning request is in keeping with the following goals and policies of the comprehensive land use plan as recommended for approval. Approve the city's economic base and tax structure through promotion of healthy, stable commercial concentrations. Assure adequate land allocation for commercial areas of sufficient size and in proper locations and encourage the development of a wide range of commercial developments for the residents and tourists to include neighborhood community and regional centers. Any questions or comments from the audience? It's to the commission. The C5 can, we should probably go through as far as all that's uh, permitted uh, in, in a C5, because that's kind of the most wide open that there is of all of them. A C5 zone allows for citywide uses by right, cultural, recreational, and health facilities, institutional facilities, office studios, and related services, eating places, hotel, motel, and entertainment facilities, neighborhood shopping goods, other shopping goods, trades and services, parking lot, auction houses, open display, retail sales, uh, church synagogue, health care facility, flea market, indoor, commercial assembly. By conditional uses are conditional uses, citywide uses by conditional use permit, utilities, commercial large site, dedicated warehouse, limited manufacturing, recreational vehicle park, recycling collection facilities, self-supporting towers, monopoles, transportation services, temporary services, mobile vending site. Okay. Any questions or comments from the commission? The only comment that I have on here is, is uh, I mean, there's a lot of like building type of industry that or, or companies, uh, commercial, um, that has gone into that area. Um, you know, all I'm all I'm addressing is the the vast amount of um, businesses that can go into this whole piece here. So, well, the type of use he's proposing needs the C5 zoning, and that's why we went. We went that direction to go C5. Okay. And he will be required to submit a large scale development plan, how he's going to lay out the piece of property. Are you keeping the existing house or is it going away? Yes, keeping the existing house. Okay, is it going to be for offices? That will be my, my residence. Okay, once you rezone it to C5, it is a non conforming use which means it can be expanded. Right. Uh, you can, are you living there now? Yes, ma'am. Okay, if it ever is vacant for more than six months, you can't reopen it as yes, a residential structure. Okay, and then we'll have to work around that with the development, but those are development issues that we have to talk about when you get to that point. Absolutely. Okay, and you can't do any work on it till you get an approved large scale development plan. Well, it, we've like levels, level, dirt work isn't work, is it? Like, Did you get a grading permit? No, ma'am. Okay, I would suggest you contact engineering tomorrow before you do anything else. Okay. okay. 
They we, ha can. we haven't really done anything. We've just kind of. You took the trees and stuff down. Yeah, we I took do trees know that. down. Yes, ma'am. Before you start moving dirt, you need to get a, a grading permit, and it will depend on where we are in the process as to how soon okay. you can get one of those. Okay? Absolutely. Okay. This will be a call for the vote. Call for the vote. Call for the vote by Mr. Mueller. Parker? Yes. Parsley? Yes. Peters? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Austin? Yes. Compton? Yes. Covert? Yes. David? Yes. Mueller? Yes. Rezoning passes 9 0. Staff will prepare the ordinance that goes to council on the 23rd. Thank you. What, one of the comments that I will have as far as when you do get into your large scale sub submission, uh, and I'm just putting this out there on it is, is that um, um, the facades and things like that, um, make sure you guys understand all of the, the requirements associated with Yes, sir, with the beautification it. and pretty similar to what I've seen across the street, the half, the brick up the halfway, is that correct? You need to get your architect to sit down with staff and we'll go over the details. Absolutely. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. Because okay. financial burdens and things like that, I mean, those are things that can't be considered in there. And, and so just need to make sure I'm just trying to help you expedite what you want to get accomplished. Absolutely. In it. So, uh, and the architects know that very well. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Uh -huh. Next item, R21-12, uh, Old Missouri East LLC, 1609 Old Missouri Road from I-1 to an I-2 presented by McClellan Consulting Engineers. Good evening, this is Nathan Street with McClellan Engineers. Uh, request tonight is to rezone the 11.65 acre site located at 1609 Old Missouri Road from I-1 to I-2 to allow for a scrap metal and refuse collection use. Uh, happy to answer any questions you may have. Staff comments? The adopted comprehensive land use plan indicates heavy industrial use for this area. The rezoning request is in keeping with the following goals and policies of the comprehensive land use plan as recommended for approval. Encourage the development of industries that further diversify and stabilize the city's economic base. They're compatible to the labor force, raw materials, and industrial climate. Provide space for new and expanding high technology industries with low environmental impact and consolidate industrial areas and traffic arteries and collectors, rail and air facilities and major utility trunk lines. Any questions or comments from the audience? To the commission? Must be a call for the vote. Call for the vote. Call for the vote by Mr. Mueller. Parsley? Yes. Peters? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Austin? Yes. Compton? Yes. Covert? Yes. David? Yes. Mueller? Yes. Parker? Yes. Rezoning passes 9 0. Staff will prepare the ordinance that goes to council on the 23rd. Thank you. Uh, next section preliminary plats, replats, final plats, preliminary plat 21 03, Benedetto subdivision phase two, Southwest Gibbs Road, and north of Harbor Avenue, presented by ESI. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Jason Apple with ESI. Uh, we're bringing this plat revision back to you. Uh, this was previously approved in 2014 timeframe, I believe. Um, very similar road configuration. Um, we are showing 38 buildable lots with two POA areas um, near kind of that central, uh, central area. We'll have a, a pool and a clubhouse um, and then kind of a green space um, under the power easement um, is proposed with this revision. So I'll answer any other questions. Staff comments? This revision is really because the detention pond went away. You've been able to secure drainage improvements off-site yes, property yes. to the east. And so that allowed you to put more lots in than what we originally had. That is correct. Had approved. And the uh, structures to be built will not be built in the power line easement itself, like the pool is not under the power line. It's correct. just outside it. Only parking will be. Only the parking. In, yeah, OK. Yeah. Um, there's not any planning comments uh, Katie, do you have any engineering comments on this? No, I don't. Okay. 
Any questions or comments from the audience? This is really a motion subject to staff comments. It's to the commission. I have a motion. Motion subject to staff comments. Motion by Mr. Covert. I have a second. Second. Second by Ms. Mueller. Peters. Yes. Tyler. Yes. Austin. Yes. Compton. Yes. Covert. Yes. David. Yes. Mueller. Yes. Parker. Yes. Parsley. Yes. Preliminary plat passes 9 0. Thank you. Next item, re replat 21-06, Vic Enterprises, Lot 7, Block 4, Howard Acres, Subdivision, presented by Balloon Associates. This is Wes Luker with Balloon Associates. Uh, we're proposing a replat of Lot 7, Block 4, the Howard Acres Subdivision. Uh, the purpose of this replat is to cut off the southern uh, 0.3 acres um, from the house that exists above. I'll be happy to answer any questions if you have any for me. Staff comments. Does it, will each of these lots have uh, sewer service, or do you have park tests to say that uh, they can be put on two structures can be on this two lots? Okay. All right. So the, the the lot to the north already has an existing septic system. Um, the one to the south that they're going to develop with the new residential house, I believe what they want to do is put a septic system on that. Um, they have not had a perk test performed yet. They're in the process of getting that done now. Okay. In the past, we've held all of those till we know that it can actually perk. Uh, now, do you sell the septic system on the lot to the north and that it's all contained on this lot? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Every, all that's contained onto the lot to the north. Okay. This replat can't move forward until we have that perk test and it shows that the lot side would be sufficient to handle that okay, okay. Um, there's some existing buildings that encroach on the lot lines and they need to be removed before the the replat is filed as well are they being moved or torn down or what's the issue yeah they're going to remove those two structures okay those would need to be done before the uh, replat could be uh, finalized as well um, are there any engineering comments no no comments on this one we have our standard comments of what has to be on the plat itself, the signature blocks and all that, that are standard comments and, and those have already been provided to you. Any questions or comments from the audience? It's to the commission, this will be a motion. Is, is there a sewer system within 300 feet of the property? There is um, a sewer line that is on, uh, I believe they have a stub out probably because there isn't an existing manhole there, but on the north side of lot one of the adjacent subdivision to the west, there is a sewer line that's over there um, that's inside of the 20 foot utility easement that's shown on the survey if you have that in front of you. Okay, I, doesn't the state have a rule that if you're within 300 feet, they wouldn't approve a septic system? That's my understanding. That's why I'm asking. It either has to be hooked to the sewer or the state, the health department has to agree to allow it to happen before we can move forward with this. Have you had any discussions with Springdale Water Utilities about connecting this to the sewer system? I believe our client has spoke with them about doing it. Um, I don't exactly know what their conversation was with regards to it. Um, and I'm not even 100% sure if where that se the sewer got built, if it's actually within the 300 foot uh, distance that you're talking about it, it might actually end up being further than that. Okay. This is what I, we're I showing on the plat is just based off of the GIS. However, there there isn't a manhole in that location when we tried to verify it in the field. Okay. I'll say it one more time. This cannot move forward as a replat until we know that, one or the other. It has to be verified that that can be hooked to the sewer or the health department has to agree or has to give a permit for a, a uh, septic system on that lot. So if it is recommended for approval tonight, it will not go to council for the replat to be approved until those documents have been provided and then we will let it go to council after that happens. Okay? Okay, correct. Yes. Okay. Or you can table it until we have that information if you would rather do that. 
uh, we'll, go, we'll, we'll get the information. I believe I've just got a text from the, our client. He says that the that, that he, he's talked to Springdale and it's further than 300 feet. So they're going to move forward with the septic system. Okay, but there again, you have to have health department sure. approval for the septic system before it can move forward. And yes. It's up to the yes. planning commission whether you want to table it or you want us to hold it until we get that information. Uh, please hold it. I didn't hear that last part. Oh, I'm sorry. Please hold it. So you want us to just table it until you get that information then? Hold it, please. <laughs> okay. When you say hold it, to me that says we're going to table this till you get the information to have it. And if you have it by next month, it'll be back on the agenda next month. Uh, what, okay, so my option is to have it tabled or what? Well, if the Planning Commission is willing to take action on it, we won't let it go to council until we have that information. The question is, do you want it, and the Planning Commission has to decide whether they want it tabled or whether they want it to go ahead and take action on it and staff not let it go forward until the other information is there. That's their call. Mr. Chairman, based on the information that we don't have, I'd recommend it be tabled because of the fact we're making a decision on only a, at best 30% of the correct information. That's your motion to take? That is my motion, yes, ma'am. I'll second. I have a second. I have a motion by Mr. Covert and a second by Mr. Tyler to table this until we have the appropriate information from the health department and the appropriate perk test done. Vote on that motion. Hmm? Vote on that yeah. Motion. Uh, Tyler? Just did, did you have that clearly represented in there, though? Yeah. That you're to table it until we get further okay. from the. Well, tabling it will automatically put it on the agenda next month. If we don't have that information, it will not be on there again, and they will have to notify adjacent property owners again if we don't have it in time. And that'll still just be an approval from the um, city council as well. Yes. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Tyler? Yes. Austin? Yes. Compton? Yes. Covert? Yes. David? Yes. Mueller? Yes. Parker? Yes. Parsley? Yes. Peters? Yes. The motion to table this um, until we have the further details passes 9 0. Again, I will remind you if you do not have the information to staff uh, for the next meeting, if it is tabled again, you will have to start all over with. Notification to the adjacent property owners. Got it. All right. Thank you. Next section is large scale development. Um, L21 12, Chick fil A, 5601 West Sunset Avenue, presented by Graydon Engineering. Good evening, council members and staff. My name is Todd Rogers. I'm a civil engineer for Chick fil A. My address is 125 Town Park Drive, Kennesaw, Georgia. We're looking to, to develop a two acre out parcel within the crossings development at the intersection of West Sunset and Gene George. It's the latest prototype building which provides modern design aesthetics and custom finishes. The drive through lane is designed with two lanes, <clears throat> excuse me, which are continuous through the entire drive through. Both lanes can be utilized to take orders, payment, and order fulfillment. There are two canopies within the drive through lanes that the employees can stand under on iPads and take orders and deliver food to the cars. We have 76 parking spaces, 43 car stack, I believe it's 92 indoor seats and a patio outside for dining. I'm available to try and answer any questions you might have. Staff comments? I always get asked the question, is the traffic gonna flow better at this one than they do in other places? And <laughs> I can guarantee you we work really hard to make sure it does because we all know how Chick-fil-A backs up traffic. So I think they've done a really good job of laying it out on this site. Uh, we have our standard comments about addressing other comments from utility companies and underground utilities. Um, there is one thing we probably need is clarification on the scale of the lighting fixtures uh, around the patio area. Uh, we can work that out internally. Um, that's the only comment I have. Katie, do you have anything? No, no comments from us either. And so this does not have any variances because it's, it's part of the whole 
district there? Right. It okay. has no variances. They've, they've worked through everything. They came in with a great design. It has the stone that's required. The signs will be designed like they're supposed to be. We've, we've been working on this a while, and it's a, it's a, one of the things we've been waiting for in Springdale for a long time. The <laughs> signage is consistent as well. The signage is consistent with the, the requirements of the district. We, uh, we've been through all that, and because uh, there are no variances to the sign ordinance. So. Okay. Any questions or comments from the audience? It's to the commission. Would this be a motion? Motion to approve. You jumped on that right away, didn't you? <laughs> he likes chicken. With, with great gratitude. Yeah. <laughs> Do I have a second? Second. Second by Ms. Mr. Covert. Austin? Yes. Compton? Yes. Covert? Yes. David? Yes. Mueller? Yes. Parker? Yes. Parsley? Yes. Peters? Yes. Tyler? Yes. The large scale for Chick-fil-A passes 9-0. So you can you. finally tell all your friends and family that Chick-fil-A <laughs> is in Springdale. Yeah. <laughs> I almost waited till the very end on this one just to wait a little bit longer on that whole thing, but thank you guys. I appreciate that one. Uh, next item, L21-13 Plaza Tire Service, 3049 East Robinson Avenue is also a variance for deviation of commercial design standards. A, the facades. B, building foundation landscaping presented by CEI Engineering. Good evening. Nate Bachelor here from CEI Engineering, here to present to you the request for approval. Plaza Tire Store, East Robinson Avenue, as mentioned, sits on approximately 1.5 acre lot, uh, being 6,800 square feet of the building itself. We'll have eight uh, bays for service, uh, providing uh, 32 parking spaces on site with uh, required stormwater management as uh, well as reusing the, the uh, location of existing driveway at the front of the property. Primarily, the parking is provided the sides and rear with uh, some accessible spaces in the front, as you can see on the map there. We do have two uh, variance requests. The building foundation landscaping, let's talk about item number B first. The required six feet of green space along the facade on the north side is met with this development, but the east and west We've re requested reduction down to three feet for that. The nature of the hardship has to do with the size of the lot. It's a very deep lot, very shallow. We don't, we don't need the, the entire depth of the property, but the uh, narrowness of it uh, constrained the development with providing a adequate means of access in and out of the service bays, the parking on either side. Uh, so we request the, the variance down to three feet for the building foundation landscaping only on the east and west sides. The uh, facade of the structure proposed uh, in, in the packet there, you will see the architectural elevations consisting of uh, painted split face CMU, the uh, east side having the roll up bays, the eight bays there showing the, uh, art, uh, showing the, the brick piers and columns accenting the center and the front and, and rears of the store. Similar treatment on the west side of the structure, but the request is for the painted CMU and the the the, uh, the articulation, the three feet of articulation for the facade being a little over 100 feet in length. So the reason again we're requesting that uh, variance on the articulation is for safety in and out of those service bays. We can accomplish a similar. Uh, look and feel and meet the intent of the ordinance by providing the brick accents that you see on the plan today. I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Do have comments? Um, we need a 24-month guarantee for all landscaping. After is, is that a bond or is that a letter of credit or just a, an acknowledgement from the developer? Or it can just be a note on the plan set. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, understood. And Austin, do you want to address the variances because you're much more versed in this than I am? Yeah, I think, I think Nate did a pretty good job of laying those out. This is revolving around the three feet of articulation that would be required uh, for the 100 feet in length on the west and east elevation, uh, as well as the, the building foundation landscaping that he mentioned. We would request, uh, additionally, there, there was one uh, staff comment received just before this meeting with the request to use uh, integrally colored CMU 
We're requesting that the exterior facades be painted as part of that uh, f variance on the facade. And the reason being? The, the pa paint is offered in a multitude of additional colors. It's going to be a high, qu high quality material. It'll be split face CMU. The paint also acts as an additional water barrier for intrusion of, of water through the permeable CMU. Katie, do you have any engineering comments? No, no comments on this one. Anything else? Austin, anything else? I believe that's it. Okay. Any questions or comments from the audience? To the commission? You need to do the variance first. Any questions on the variances? This be a call for the vote on the variances. We can do them individually or together. I'd prefer together unless there's opposition. Call we can do vote. the variances together. I did want to make one comment that, that we've had some drainage complaints in this area in the past, so I'm sure that they've met the drainage criteria manual, um, but just want to note that there have been problems downstream from this site. Katie, are you aware of the drainage issues downstream? No, I, I had not been made aware of drainage issues. I do know that they proposed um, a level spreader on the outlet of this detention pond to retain sheet flow as it leaves the site. And the, the pond is tucked up uh, as close to the parking lot as possible there to allow for additional, uh, additional length of flow between it and the adjoining property owner. So the level spreader acts to, to spread out the level of the flow rather than a point source discharge. And then the additional 60 feet to the neighboring fence line should uh, assist us with uh, matching the existing flow characteristics. Okay, thank you. All right. So I have a call for vote by Mr. Covert for both of these. Yes, please. David. Yes. Mueller. Yes. Parker? Yes. Parsley? Yes. Peters? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Austin? Yes. Compton? Yes. Covert? Yes. Variance passes 9 0. I have a motion on the large scale. Motion to approve subject staff comments. Motion uh, by Mr. Covert. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Dr. Compton. Compton? Yes. Show. Covert? Yes. David? Yes. Mueller? Yes. Parker? Yes. Parsley? Yes. Peters? Yes. Tyler? Tyler? Yes. Austin? Yes. Large scale passes 9 0. Thank you for Thank your time. You. Next section, Board of Adjustments, we have B20-14, 20, 20 Francisco and Adriana Sains, 294 Trevi Fontana Plaza, variance for deviation of front setback from 30 feet to 16 and a half feet, presented by Francisco and Adriana Sains, uh, Joy Ryan Jones. Hello, I'm here for a variance of, um, from the front setback from a storage in my backyard. Okay, can you state your name for the? Adriana Sains. Okay. Uh, this uh, vacation of the utility easement has gone to council and council has approved it, which would allow for this variance for the setback. Okay. Okay. Any questions or comments from the audience? To the commission? This be a call for the vote. Call for the vote. Call for the vote by Mr. Covert. Mueller? Yes. Parker? Yes. Parsley? Yes. Peters? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Austin? Yes. Compton? Yes. Covert? Yes. David? Yes. Variance passes 9 0. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Next item B21 17, Victor Ortez, 1129 Jefferson Street, variance for deviation of paving requirement with a two year bill of assurance presented by Victor and Rolando Ortez. Ortiz? Yes. I'm sorry about that. You want to tell me a little bit about this here? Uh, well, I did a, we put gravel down on the property because of uh, the, the soil was so soft and I kept on 
um, tracking out into the road. So I figured I was to avoid any problems, I put gravel down, but uh, on on the property, part of the property, which I didn't know it was a cold violation. So I, uh, I was told that I, could, I had to do a hard surface uh, on it. And I'm kind of wondering if we could actually do like asphalt on it instead of concrete. Can do asphalt instead of concrete. Mm -hmm. uh, the structure that's at the back, that was built as an accessory structure to a single family home. Mm -hmm. And it's not used for a business, correct? No. Okay. It's just a uh, storage for my personal stuff. Okay. Okay. Now there was, uh, Austin, did you find a previous bill of assurance on this piece of property? No, we weren't able to get a, a bill of assurance. Okay. No. Ed, do you have any background on this to provide? Because I think this property has been in before. That was whenever I uh, requested a permit to build what's uh, that shop in the back, the, the okay. storage. Okay. Ed, you want to address that? Was he told at the time he'd have to have paid parking for that structure? At the time, we didn't think he was going to have any parking. He was he wanted to build a shop building, I just to accessory build to the to the. We it was accessory structure to the resident that's in the industrial mm -hmm. zone. Um, I do believe previously a previous owner um, they had a paving issue, um, heavy equipment. They were not granted a, a variance, and they moved. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. So That's this why would, we remember it. That's, okay. Yeah, I, yeah. I looked through everything and I couldn't find, but I knew there was some discussion about heavy equipment being stored at that. That's why I asked you what the building was going to be used for. Okay. Okay. So the the he, he built a building without a permit, and that got all taken no. care of, correct? He, he he got a permit. Okay. The permit was issued for an accessory structure to the mm -hmm. residents. It's still that I understand. Mm -hmm. I just heard. So. Okay. So he's not using it for a business. He's just driving back and forth, so he has to pave it even if he uses it just as an accessory structure? The paving didn't come from us. I think that came from code enforcement. That came from code enforcement. Yeah. yeah. Neighborhood services. Okay. Did they think that you were operating a business there? I have my trailers in there. That are personal, you don't use in a business? Well, I, have, I own a business that's registered, and we got our offices here in Springdale, but I don't conduct other than park my trailers there. Yeah, can, can you pull that mic around? Oh, like I said, we have a business, but it's the only use that we use that for. It's for parking trailers, my trailers. But we have our business, our offices are here in Springdale. That's where we register and we work off of that. We don't have anything else other than trailers in there. But those trailers aren't at this location. Those are not what again? Are not at this location. They are. Some of them are, are that. Yeah, are at that location. But you are operating okay, a business that, in that one. That's the problem. If you're taking your trailers that you're using for your business and operating and okay. parking them at this location, I couldn't figure out how we got into okay. this. Okay. Okay. What is your business? Uh, construction. Okay. So you're taking some of your trailers that you use on construction site and parking them. And we parked them. them there. So that's really not an accessory use to a single-family residence. Then. Okay. Okay. Do we know how this property is zoned? I thought the house was a non-conforming use. Yeah, the zoning is industrial. It's zoned industrial. Yeah. Okay, so that's why you have to have the park. Okay, now okay. we understand why we okay. have to have the parking. Okay. All right. Okay, what area were you told that you would need to pave? Because we don't have any idea if you have to, are you parking around, you can't even see We've the got the building this. on the right upper corner. So from the bottom, uh, left corner that's where we have our entryway and we and we put gravel all all in that area to get to it and and i put gravel down where we would park the trailer up against the uh upper part that that's where we got a fence and that's where we park our trailers to keep any any uh mud off the road okay it, it's a little hard for us to grant a bill of assurance on something we don't know exactly where it's located and how what what the distance is so my suggestion would be that we table this and come back with a drawing that shows where you put the gravel and how much it's going to be. Now, if, if you can do asphalt, are you still going to ask for the two-year? Yes. Okay. Uh, asphalt, because it it's covers a good section in there. I mean, I'm open to whatever is going to solve the problem. If we need to do part of it, if we got to remove any gravel, it's fine. Okay. We, we really need some kind of an idea of what the area is. Okay. And uh, so can you come back with a drawing that shows where the actual location of the gravel is and where you're proposing that you want the bill of assurance? Sure. Okay. I, I just, I can't, 
recommend that we do this if we don't really know what we're talking about. No, I, I, we, I agree. Do we have anybody from code enforcement online or, or here? I don't think so. We've got a, a newer Google Earth version. Yeah. Have okay. you seen it? I've seen the Google Earth version of it. Can I mean, you it get, gives you a better. Yeah, yeah, the Google Alert kind of shows uh, where the gravel is. Okay, when, how long has the gravel been down? Uh, I'm going to say about six months okay. now. Austin, can you get to Google Earth back there? We, we can try it. There again, we don't have a drawing that mm -hmm. shows exactly what it's going to be. How much parking spaces did they tell you you needed to have? Uh, he didn't say. All he said was, uh, it, since I got gravel and it's not permitted, I got to do a hard surface. I can't have any gravel. Okay. Uh, let us talk with Ron and we can come up with that and, and table this to next month and then we will know exactly what we're looking at. Okay. Okay. Does that work for everybody? Yeah. The only comment I was going to make is it may be helpful to have someone from code here if they're yes. going to have things on the docket for us to try and understand. It's just really, really hard and it's not fair to the, yeah. to the citizens to have to try and explain it. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Come back next month. All yeah, right. We'll be at the first of the agenda next month. Okay. okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Next item, B21-18, Nelson Anea, 3611 Avenue, deviation of rear setback from 20 feet to 10 feet, presented by Nelson Anea. If you can come up to the mic and state your name and address, please. Yes, um, I'm translating for Nelson. I'm just his um, nephew. Um, this is Nelson Anaya, and he just wants to build a porch in his home in the backyard because the door is getting rotten with all the water coming in. It's like coming on top of the, like inside, it's going inside the, almost kind of inside the house, so the door's kind of rotting. Okay, so he's wanting to put a canopy over the back door. How, how big of a, has he already built one or is he asking to permission to do that? He's asking permission to build the porch. Okay. Ed, have you seen any drawings of, of what we're talking about? Yeah, he'll need to come up to the mic for a second. No, obviously um, someone talked to him and he's getting his variance before he gets a permit. Good. We like that. We like for it to, to work that direction. So how, how big of a porch are you putting on there? ¿Qué tan grande va a ser el porche? Uh, si me dan permiso. Um, he says he has some pictures here of the of the backyard. Uh, okay, it's a 20 foot backyard, mm -hmm. pretty much. So, what's the the length of the porch that you want to put from the what? edge of the, the wall quantity. out toward the fence? The I'm assuming you want 10 feet. Son 10 pies. Um, para enfrente, sí. Uh huh. So the front, he said yes, uh, 10 feet. Uh huh. Cuánto? So he doesn't know from the long, but from the front, he said okay. 10 feet. Okay. So that, that's the variance that we're talking about. It would be closer than, it would be in the 20 foot setback. It would extend 10 feet into that. And then the length of the house, you wouldn't go any wider than the length of the house. No, it would not okay. go any wider than this. Because it wouldn't need a side setback then. You would only need the rear setback being reduced to 10 feet. Is it just a patio or does it also have a canopy on it as well? Uh, it's just going to be like a wooden porch. Yeah, he's, not, he wants the wooden structure over the door to keep the rain from coming in. Okay, so... Not enclosing the sides. You would just be putting up posts yeah. on the end. Okay, yeah. So and pouring a concrete thing. slab for the whole thing? Yes, yes. Okay. So the overhang on that is still going to be within that? The overhang would have to be... The edge of the overhang would be have to be at 10 feet. Okay. Okay. It's not the concrete, but the overhang. Okay. If, if this is granted, you need to get with building inspection with a drawing so that you can verify the measurements that you can do based on if we give you this variance to 10 feet. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Nope. Any questions or comments from the audience? It's to the commission. Call for the vote. Call for vote by Mr. Covert. Parker? Yes. Parsley? Yes. Peters? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Austin? Yes. Compton? Yes. Covert? Yes. David? Yes. Mueller? Yes. Variance passes 9 0. 
Okay, so you can go up to 10 feet. You need to get with the building inspection office to get a permit so you can verify all of the dimensions. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Thank you for doing it in this order. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Many times it's built before we find out about it. <laughs> okay. Next item B21-21 DC, DCSB Holdings LLC Blades Landscaping 1380 Butterfield Coach Road variance for deviation of eight foot fence height and paving requirements with two-year bill of assurance presented by Derek Deaton. How are y'all doing? I'm Derek Deaton. I'm a owner of Blades Landscaping and we uh, have a property on 1380 Butterfield Coach Road that is zone C2 and uh, whenever we bought the property we didn't know that we were going to have to do paving so now we uh, realize we have to do the paving and just need a little more time to get it all done. You have a drawing that shows what area you're talking about paving you do have. Okay. Yes, ma'am. And so you're asking for a variance for all of that area to be paved within two years. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And then the eight foot, the extension of the height of the fence to eight feet, what, where will that be? That is uh, on the outside, everything. That's the out, outline of the property. And right now we have a privacy fence of six foot and didn't know that it had to be eight foot. Okay. So basically everything on the, from the side of the house all the way around the back side and back to where we have the entrance, all that is six foot right now. Okay. So that wall would be changed to eight feet? Yes. And they're doing landscaping in front of that fence because you are a landscaping company, yes, that's correct? Yes, okay. that's why we got the drawing with the landscaping okay. and we got the sign ordered actually today. So hoping to get all that taken care of here pretty soon. Okay. Austin, are we missing anything? Can't hear you. Okay. Okay. I don't think your mic's on back there, but okay. Any questions or comments from the audience? To the commission? Take them together or separate, whichever way you want to do them. Well, I'll have to recuse on this one. Recuse? I'll be recused on this one, so I said that's, okay. that's whatever you want. I have a, call. a recommendation to the call for the vote. Okay. Call for the vote. And we want to do them together? Sure, let's okay. do that. So call for the vote by Dr. Compton. Parsley? Yes. Peters? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Austin? Yes. Compton? Yes. Covert? Refuse. Uh, David? Yes. Mueller? Yes. Parker? Yes. Uh, we have eight yeses and one recuse. This passes on here. You need to get with staff so we can draw up the bill of assurance document so it can be signed and filed on that piece of property. All right. Okay. Appreciate it. Thank you all. Thank you. Appreciate it. Next item is the waivers. We have W21-02, Miguel and Don Jimenez, 913 South Spring Creek Road, request for sidewalk waiver presented by Miguel and Don Jimenez. Yes. Uh, this is Miguel Jimenez. Uh, I built a house in night 13 Spring Creek Road. And uh, so I would, uh, I got a house in there, but it's uh, South Walk is uh, really, um, uh, it's kind of no makes sense to how to do the South Walk and the, and the house size. So uh, that's why I'm, I'm here. Okay. Staff comments? Well, this this is a lot that would have a lot of sidewalk because it has it on that 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 crossroad across through there, and then along Spring Creek Road as well. Uh, Ed, do y'all have any any? I mean, I'm sure his building permit said that he was to build a sidewalk. Uh, are you asking to not build any sidewalk at all in this location? No, build any sidewalk at all. Uh, that uh, I don't know if you you, you see the property, uh, but it's right on the on the new highway uh, they built in there. It's right in, next to the to the to the bridge that cross uh, cross right to the new highway on the on the knees and the top is the uh, Spring Creek. Is and there the, the, is there a sidewalk the across built. the bridge? Is there a sidewalk across the bridge? No. Okay, I didn't think there was either, there either. Okay. So this really, I mean, I don't normally 
recommend waiver of sidewalks. But this one's kind of out there in the middle of nothing. I don't see it being connected to a whole lot of other sidewalks. So, any questions or comments from the audience? It's to the commission. This is a recommendation to council. Recommendation, recommendation to move forward to council with staff comments. Recommendation but to waive the to waive. Yeah. Correct. Recommendation by Mr. Covert to waive the sidewalk waiver. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Dr. Compton. Peters? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Austin? Yes. Compton? Yes. Covert? Yes. David? Yes. Mueller? Yes. Parker? Yes. Parsley? Yes. Waiver passes 9-0. The actual waiver of the requirement of sidewalks has to be granted by City Council, so staff will prepare the resolution with the recommendation to waive it and will go to Council on the 23rd. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Planning Director Report. Uh, council actions in January, the amendment to Chapter 56, the changes, updates on the landscaping and uh, buffer ordinance was approved. Uh, the replant of lots 14 and 15 of Block 2 of Carter Edition was approved. Uh, Gary Compton, Ben Peters, and Dell Tyler were all reappointed to the Planning Commission and their terms expire in January of 2025, January 31 of 2025, and the replant of the lot for Casey's General Store, and I think that's a carryover. Uh, the tandem lot, I mean, the conditional uses that were recommended to Council were approved. Uh, at the tandem lot at 7132 Burr Oak, the use unit 36, which is horses kept in a residential district at 8727 East Wagon Wheel Road, and the use unit 44 mobile vending at 4407 to 4409 South Thompson were all approved. Uh, the rezonings for the property at 408 North Thompson from C2 to C5 was approved. The A1 to SM3 on, uh, on East Don Tyson Parkway was approved. The A1 to C2 on North Thompson was approved. The A1 to C2 on My Street Road was approved. The A1 to SF1 was approved on, on Burr Oak Road. The um, A1 to SF2 on Clyde Lane was approved. I think there is an error in the legal description. We're gonna have to do a Scrivener's error, or Scrivener's uh, correction for that one. And I'll go back to council. The rezoning on North Thompson from SF2 to MF4 was approved, and the Hilton Road A1 to SF2, A1 and SF2 to PUD was approved. The, uh, plenty, the council upheld the Planning Commission's denial of the sidewalk waiver at 4078 Carriage Crossing. They vacated the utility easement, as we just talked about, uh, for that, that we uh, gave the uh, variance for the front setback. They approved purchase of property at 400 Park Street, which is a Quonset Hunt building on Park, will become part of Luther George Park expansion. And they bought a, uh, purchased a track on Downham Road where the double curves go through for future street improvements, transferred property back to the Public Facilities Board, an area north of the fire station on Huntsville that wasn't being used identified funding for the Luther George Park improvement project and acquired some property for street projects in the bond program. Um, next work session would be March the 16th at 5.30. Uh, we need to start and talk about comprehensive land use plan and master street plan updates. And since we had to cancel the February work session, I uh, wanna see if we're interested in having a second work session in March on March the 30th since March has an extra Tuesday. And there again, we would work on the, the comprehensive land use plan and the master street plan because we're kind of behind with COVID for last year and missing the one in February. So those are my recommendations. Anyone have a conflict with uh, doing the two meetings, March 16th and March 30th? Okay, anything else? All right, appreciate, appreciate everyone. Have a great evening, meeting adjourned. Thank you.